Hello everyone, I'm RX34 from Circuit Gamers and today I have official information about the brand new Black Ops 2 DLC map pack, Revolution. Set for release on January 29th, we're going to be getting 4 new multiplayer maps, a brand new multiplayer weapon which is a first for any Call of Duty DLC, and a zombies map. Now I did do a video about this previously when we saw that image of a promotional stand that had been put up in a GameStop store in America way way before anything official had been announced. People were still wondering back then whether or not that was just completely fake but we do now know that this is indeed official as HMV and Amazon UK have both posted information about the Revolution map pack on their Facebook page and their website respectively. In these posts they've given brief descriptions of everything in the pack so we now have a much better idea of what we're going to be getting. Starting with the multiplayer maps, the first one is Hydro. Hydro boasts some interactive features and you're going to be able to open and close floodgates letting water through, blocking off paths and presumably killing enemies if they get in the way. This is a very large map and HMV describes it as perfect for long distance killing. Now I'm not usually a big fan of massive map styles, I don't find them particularly fun running long distances to objectives or just to find enemies to kill, but if HMV is to be believed, their Facebook post describes this as possibly the best map in the DLC. We'll have to form our own opinions when we get to play this. Second map is Downhill, now this is a medium sized map based in the French Alps, this is a snow map, the first snow map for Black Ops 2, a map style that we were significantly lacking in the vanilla maps. There's chairlifts and a strategically placed lodge. The lodge has a completely accessible interior, so if you don't want to stick around in the snow you can head in there. It's probably going to be a bit of a battle for the lodge, which could lead to some interesting gameplay, maybe a bit like Estate from Modern Warfare 2. Now I did mention those ski lifts and they are worth mentioning. They are interactive and they are going to be able to be used. It seems to be a bit like the zip lines on Kowloon. Although I guess if it's a ski lift you're going to be able to go up as well as down. We also have Mirage which is set in the Gobi Desert. and It utilises sand dunes to provide different levels of elevations. So this sounds like it's going to be quite a vertical but also a bit of an open map. There's a sanctuary in the centre and that acts as a natural choke point. This sounds like quite a good feature as it's going to be sending people into the middle. While those dune areas are going to allow you to flank around the outside. The final map is Grind although HMV is calling it Skate. I do believe Grind is the official name for it though. Just as I guessed in my previous video this is in fact set in a skate park along the Venice California boardwalk. Players can use ramps and bowls for cover. This is a small map set to deliver fast paced action. So that's all four of the multiplayer maps. We're also getting a brand new weapon to use in multiplayer. The Peacekeeper SMG is a brand new submachine gun and it's going to be filling that space in your loadout with firepower and accuracy. Now for those of you that are just like me and are hoping that these DLC weapons aren't going to turn COD into a pay to win affair, that description can't fill you with a lot of hope. Power and accuracy from a submachine gun seems a little bit questionable and of course we will have to play with this weapon to really form an opinion on it but I really hope that this isn't ridiculously overpowered compared to the other submachine guns. Submachine guns are already very powerful but to put something that good into the hands of people that have only paid for this pack it is a little bit unfair. That is the pessimistic way to look at it. I can only hope that they do balance it out right and aren't just looking for cheap ways of enticing people to buy their DLC. I've been seeing a lot of questions about what happens to getting diamond on submachine guns with the introduction of this weapon. Now I can see what you guys are thinking when you say that the addition of this weapon ruins the idea of getting gold on every submachine gun to earn diamond. If you get gold on all of the submachine guns that are already in the vanilla game then you will get diamond for it and I don't think the peacekeeper is going to affect that. Will the peacekeeper have diamond? I would imagine that if you have diamond on the vanilla weapons and you reach gold on the peacekeeper then you will get diamond on it as well. That is what makes sense to me. Obviously that's not official but I really can't see them preventing you from getting diamond on the other submachine guns just because of this DLC weapon. As for other things like challenges and uh, player card emblems, player card backgrounds, I really don't know if they're going to add all of that in. Obviously there's a possibility for that to happen at least in the player card backgrounds there is a DLC section 
and a few of you probably already have a couple of the DLC backgrounds at least. There's one for Elite and there's one for having the Season Pass. So it would make sense that they would add in some extra DLC backgrounds relating to challenges with the Peacekeeper. Again we'll just have to wait and see. Finally we have a brand new Zombies map and again it does seem like I was right in my last video. This new Zombies map is called Die Rise and it's set atop buildings that are literally falling apart. It does in fact seem like Die Rise is a pun on the word High Rise rather than any reference to Derisa like some people were assuming. It's set in China and it's turned downtown into a dilapidated and dangerous MC Escher painting. Now it's very interesting that they've described it in that way. If you aren't familiar with MC Escher's work I really recommend that you go and check out some of his pieces. Really strange stuff that mess with your idea of perspective. Very odd but very interesting. Now I have already seen speculation that this reference to MC Escher is to do with the Easter egg. Now the reasoning behind this was Escher has a piece called Tower of Babel and the Easter egg in transit is called Tower of Babel which could possibly be a reference. Again, I don't know how thin that link is. Could possibly be nothing to do with it, but I just saw that commented somewhere and thought that was quite an interesting idea that I should share with you guys. I'm not massively familiar with the zombie storyline in Black Ops 2 at the moment, so those of you with more idea, feel free to comment your ideas about Die Rise. Tell me what you think about it. Now that's pretty much everything describing what's in the pack, and now is the answer to the obvious question, when is it out and how much does it cost? It is coming out on January the 29th on Xbox Live. If you got the season pass then you will just be able to download it. If you haven't you'll be able to purchase it for 1200 Microsoft points. It's worth noting that buying the season pass for 4000 Microsoft points will save you 800 points over the year. You'll also be able to access Nuketown Zombies and an exclusive player card. The Revolution map pack will be available on Sony PlayStation 3 and PC from February 29th according to HMV, although it's worth noting that this year February 29th isn't actually a date, so we can assume they meant March the 1st. That's the second time I've seen somebody make that mistake today. A lot of people seem to be forgetting that February doesn't have that many dates in it. So I think that really is everything covered. If you enjoyed the video please leave a rating. If you do have any more questions or just want to share your opinion make sure to comment below and if you want to keep up to date with Black Ops 2 news and you haven't already make sure you hit subscribe I shall see you next time